Hey guys, and welcome back to another podcast with Physique Development here. So we are going to be talking about what we learned about posting almost every day for the past two to three months. Yeah, uh, for the last three months, we have gone all in on our social media content. And to give you guys a little bit of background, Sue and I have been on social media for some time. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had moments of greater pushes and moments of no (laughs) content being posted (laughs) whatsoever. And I think that it would be helpful for people to probably hear like when we started with content and then kind of how the ebbs and flows have gone since we got started. Yeah. Um, Do you, are you saying starting with content like on Instagram in general? I would, I would, I, well, I guess specifically for fitness purposes, I okay. suppose, like uh, yeah, prior that's to what that, I'm thinking. we I'm were not having thinking like time like in high school yeah. of me posting <laughs> pictures, but I would say for me, I got on Instagram. I think my first fitness post was in 2016. I want to say it's 2015 or 2016, and I made a separate fitness Instagram, which is what you guys know today as Sue Gaines, which is my normal Instagram, (laughs) and I started to post just my workouts and my food that I was eating because I was learning so much about fitness, and I loved it, and so I was just posting everything and sharing it all, and shortly after, I started my first bikini prep, and so that was a way that I documented things, and soon after that, I got on YouTube, and I was posting pretty consistently on YouTube. I started off, you know, here and there getting videos up. Uh, but then I did Vlogmas one year. Mm-hmm. So that's 25 videos, a video a day of December, <laughs> every day in December. That's like, I'm like, if you do Vlogmas, you're like committed. Because, We're planning to do it this year. Because <laughs> daily <laughs> vlogs are so difficult or just daily videos are so difficult. Yeah. And I like kind of burnt myself out. Plus the school is happening and all that. Uh, but on Instagram, I like, Alex said, I've been hit or miss of sometimes of being really consistent to not consistent. Uh, And it was something that when I was like, I am doing this as my job was probably the other biggest push that I've had of I'm going to post every day. I'm going to make sure I have these specific hashtags. I'm going to then go to these hashtags and comment on five of these pictures under each hashtag and all of that. And that seems like an Instagram that's from a different world, like thinking about 2017 Instagram versus now, it's so different. (laughs) This is literally so different. It hurts. Uh, So then infographics, if you follow physique development for a while, you know that Alex and I and just physique development in general has been posting infographics for a very long time. Austin had the X and check videos that went crazy um, on Instagram in 2017 as well. Something like that, yeah. So different, again, a different time. Um, and so I have been probably in the last year, last year was probably the least consistent that I was, or it would be like, oh, I did it for posting like five days in a week, and then I would go a full week without posting. And that was kind of the name of 2021 of just not a lot of posts whatsoever. And then we came into 2022, but I'll have Alex go ahead and catch you up on him. Until yeah. 2022. Um, we started the fitness posting and things of that nature in 2014. And so we started with YouTube and we started with um, posting content on Instagram more from a, a fitness standpoint, more YouTube than it was Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like I, we weren't on Instagram as much. It was more so engaging with individuals on YouTube in 2014. And so that would be kind of the start of the fitness content in general. At that time, it was a matter of editing very harshly with the photos, finding the perfect flex photo. I was also maybe 170 pounds <laughs> soaking wet. And so in that context, I had to find every angle that was possible for me still to this day, <laughs> being significantly heavier, <laughs> carrying oh, much yeah. more muscle mass. I still do. Oh, um, but uh, we started there and it started with YouTube. And that was probably the most fun that I had had because it was, and, and right now actually surpasses that, which is really cool. Yeah. And so at that time I was just, it was so fresh. It was a way to engage with more people. I was in a scenario where I had transitioned in my life from from baseball and the friends that I had had within sports went to a different college. And truly the only friend that I had there was Austin. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way for me to connect with with new people and to connect with people on campus because that was kind of the people who were watching were people that were at school or what have you. Um, So that's kind of how things started for for myself. And then as time progressed, every year was a matter of... um, 
I would post a good bit and those posts would get me new clients. And then I would get so submerged into the client work that I would stop posting. So it, you would see if you went back on my Instagram, it'd be like this massive surge of content, that content getting new clientele and then there'd be no content. <laughs> and then it would be like, okay, I've got a good grasp on the client work that I have. You'd see a big spike of content. It would do the same thing, which is a blessing. And, and the, you know, the point of the content itself probably would have worked exponentially better if I would just kept with it. <laughs> it's a crazy concept of being consistent. Um, but that was kind of the, the ebbs and flows really from like 20, what it would be 16 mm -hmm. to 2019 is the, the ebbs and flows of that. And then we had 2020 and which was a challenging year for us all. Yes. And so within that, we were very blessed to have Miguel. That was the first year that we were able to work with Miguel in a different capacity than we are now. And so in that year we had the content that Miguel was, was shooting for us, which was abundantly helpful. Like mm -hmm. we don't have Miguel in 2020. <laughs> I'm not sure I post once. <laughs> <laughs> Those exercise you may have never seen me. and everything that we did that year was, I mean, Crazy. everything. Like yeah. that is what we needed to do. If we did not do that in 2020, I like really don't know where we would be. Yeah. Because at the very beginning, when everything happened, we pivoted very hard and we, I mean, you, myself, Austin stayed up for like long, long nights, creating <laughs> long all night. kinds of different variations of home training where it was like we had home training created for the clients from absolutely nothing, yeah. body weight equipment. And then we would go a step up of just like just bands. And then we had bands and dumbbells, du like dumbbells just only. Dumbbells. Right. Like it was so many programs. Dumbbells and barbells, just barbell. <laughs> and we cranked that out as soon as everyone kind of pivoted to a place of like, oh my gosh, nothing is open we cranked that out in maybe three or four days. Mm -hmm. And it was just like chronically doing that and making all these training programs. It was a really challenging time for both yeah. of us. We were um, working like from the second we woke up, like 5 a.m. till at least 10 p.m. every night. Yeah. And we immediately were like, I I mean, I just accessed these videos earlier today because someone had a home, um, had TRX stuff. And so I needed to find a video of us for TRX. And we spent like a whole day just filming every banded video that we could think <laughs> yeah. of because we had no banded videos before yeah. this. And we spent like a whole day just videoing each other. And we're like, you you thought of something? All right, here's the phone. You thought of something? All right, get me. Yeah. And we got like every banded exercise we could, like put it all in a drive. We made, like you said, those all those workout programs. And then we made a ton of resources for our clients of saying what you can do as far as for your mental health during this time, what you can do. And this is all when we thought it was just like a few weeks. Locked oh my but, gosh. Uh, what you can do as far as like activities you can do with your family, what you should do if you're working from home. Like we went all out. Yeah. And that was like the hardest I had ever like truthfully had such challenging work ever. I've had times of craziness going on in my life and Alex as well. But that year was like the craziest that I had ever worked on like one thing yeah. being like physique development so much. Yeah. And it was a, a time in which, um, like, like I said, Miguel was very helpful in just having content for us, essentially. Then navigating through that full year and then 2021, now Miguel has taken another opportunity from a work perspective, and it's back to Sue and I creating content for one another. And so... And also that year we had uh, been trying to move from November of 2020, mm. the house that we uh, had verbally agreed that we were going to purchase falls through and- We actually got in contract and they reneged right. and all that. It was a mess. <laughs> At the beginning of February- uh, yeah. And so at the beginning of February, and then we're going through this whole shopping process. Anyone who has shopped for a home over the last three years knows that it has been very, very challenging in general. And so we're going through that. It's very exhausting. And um, we end up getting, I mean, the opportunity of a lifetime to move into this home. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I mean, God working in crazy yeah. ways. Um, and so in that, we were able to get into this home, but it was a year in, in where we were focused very heavily on growing physique development as well as preparing for a move later into the year. Mm -hmm. And so my focus was painfully heavily on those things. And so content itself took a backseat in mm -hmm. 2021. And so that was probably the lowest content threshold that anyone had seen from me in at least, you know, six years. Yeah. 
And I'll also say like our mental health in 2020 and 2021 took quite a time. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you as well. I, I'm not saying it's just us, but that was also very difficult because we were both in pretty wonky spots on and off. And so creating content, anyone knows when you're in a bad mental headspace is very difficult. And I also was personally consuming a lot of content at that time. And it was making it even more difficult, where it just felt everything was impossible to like get done where obviously it wasn't, but it felt that way. And it was like an uphill battle every day, because of everything going on plus mental health, and then like trying to navigate through growing a business as well. Yeah. And so that takes you from 2021 for us to now being into this year where um, it's funny, Miguel had taken the other opportunity in 2021. And I had said at that time, we'll see you in a year. And so and I've been telling everyone because Mm -hmm. people would ask about Miguel. I'm like, he's he's doing something else right now. He'll be back. And (laughs) people are like, uh, and I'm like, he doesn't know, but he'll be back. (laughs) And so um, thankfully, we get on a call with Miguel and voila, we're able to uh, make an offer and he's uh, willing to accept. And so we've had him here since the beginning of February or March. March, I'm sorry. So for March, um, and it has been a sprint since he got here (laughs) in the most uh, like best way possible. Hard, but still best. (laughs) So so it kind of gets you caught up to the point of of having uh, Miguel here. And that's when we've made the large push within the content and those different factors. And that's what we'll be digging. That's what we'll be digging into today. Yeah. But when 2020 hit, we knew like, hey, we've been told multiple times, like when you look at a business and especially within ours of it being something that is remote, we had felt like, at least I personally had felt like we were really going after a lot of things and then we weren't seeing the return that I thought that we would have seen. And then it was so obvious now looking back, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. of like you know what you're talking about. You have the information. You just need to get it out there and just do it. And for so long, I felt like, well, what's the next step in business? And it was just do the thing that you know how to do and get after it. And so in January, before Miguel had started, we had decided like, hey, we're doing it this year. We're not just saying we're doing it and going to be like, oh, we're going to be consistent on Instagram. We're doing it. And if you have heard me talk about things, you know, that challenges really help me. And so being able to have Alex be like, let's see if you can do 13 posts in a month and then we'll do this if you do. And I was like, bet I'll do more than that. And so we were able to start getting posting in January to already get in the groove of it, which set us up for a lot of success once it came into February and March and now coming into March, April, um, and going into May here soon, which is wild that Mm -hmm. we're at the end of April going into May. Yeah. And within the content itself, I I think that it would be helpful to speak to some of the self-limiting beliefs and some of the hurdles that we've had to face before we even get into what we've learned, you know, through the process. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, laying the foundation and, and understanding that there's so many people watching this that are also struggling with like trying to build their own business, trying to find their voice and and how they speak on social media and those different factors. And just know that (laughs) we have been there on a multiple different occasions, as well as different like varying of levels and those different things. So what are some of the the hurdles or self-limiting beliefs that you've had from a social media perspective? And and I'll dig into mine as well. Yeah. Well, this is something that we have talked about personally together. And so I know that we're both on the same page with this, but I really struggled with wanting to try. (laughs) And what I mean by that is I was afraid of what other people would think. I was afraid of how other people would view it, as well as being feeling like I just couldn't get it out there because I was so infrequent with posting that when I did post, I might not have, I might have a really great post. I'm like, awesome. And then the next time I post, it's not so great. And then I'm like, I got to wait until I have another really great (laughs) post. And so I wouldn't post. And it was this fear of, not being able to create something or not having something valuable to say. And like I said, it's about consuming content, which I'll go into as far as things that I learned that really help and don't help when it comes to creating content. But it was like this fact of the matter of like, okay, we're good at what we do. We know what we're doing. Like we shouldn't have to like market ourselves because we're already good at what we're doing. 
And that <laughs> that's just not true. Yeah. <laughs> you have to market yourselves to get in front of people's eyes. And especially within this day and age of how much people are consuming and how much is thrown at people on a day-to-day -day basis. So like I really was struggling with not wanting to look like I was putting in that much effort, that it was just coming across like, oh, this is just good no matter what. I didn't want it to feel like I was putting in this so much effort. And it also was partly because I didn't want to fail and yeah. put in so much effort. Right. Yeah. It's, it's it's a matter of if you try, then you're putting yourself into an opportunity to where you could fail. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier just to be like, well, I'm not really trying that hard. So if it doesn't do well, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. And so now we're in this place where we are trying significantly harder. <laughs> Very hard. Significantly. <laughs> and within that, even with posts that don't do as well, or maybe they don't do as well in terms of um, what we anticipate, it's such a better headspace in terms of like people may not have seen it. We may not have articulated ourselves in a way that's the most conducive, or it could be a situation where it's just like, we just have to be better, mm -hmm. right? It just like, we need to do a better job of the content itself. Um, and so like with within the limiting beliefs that I carry within social media, this is vast. This is one of the things that I feel like not many people know about me in general, just because I don't share a ton from a social media perspective. I've done a lot better over the past yeah. weeks, um, months, if you will. And so within that, one of the things for me is that I, from a very beginning was very nervous to show my goofy side and which is a big part of my personality in terms of my humor and just uh, jokes and, and clowning on people and those different things. That's a big part of my day to day. And I was nervous to showcase that for the fact in which I didn't want to be looked at as unintelligent for being goofy. And so I was associating, especially at the beginning, and I'm just now working out of this. So eight years in, what's up? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just now working through this. And so- Oh, didn't it didn't just happen in a few weeks? You <laughs> no, it didn't. It? Oh, okay. No. Um, <laughs> and so that has been a fun uh, thing to overcome because it has been such a, a limiting component for me. And I think is a big piece why some people may not connect with me because I'm showcasing like a fraction of myself. Very small fraction. <laughs> <laughs> and so within that, that was one of the biggest things is like, now I see I can be goofy. People enjoy me being goofy. I can also showcase that I'm very intelligent within the aspects that I feel you know intelligent in and those different things. And so that was probably the biggest one. There's there's other ones, but we can kind of keep digging through. But Yeah. And I think that within that, it's also, and we've kind of had conversations about this of like, I didn't feel in tune with myself to a certain degree to the point that I do now. Like I'm while, of course, I could always go back and say, oh, what if oh, I would have just posted consistently moving forward? Or Alex and I have had conversations of like, what if we just documented this? Or what if like things blew up before they like have the opportunity to blow up and all of this? And we've mentioned like we weren't ready for things to be bigger than they were. And we're so glad that we're in the spot we are now. And we're so glad it took until this time to hire a full-time videographer because it really allowed us to fine tune our communication skills, our personalities without a camera in our faces. Now that's not to say anyone who does do it that way is wrong. I'm just speaking towards what I believe looking back, it makes sense of why all of these things happened at the time that they did. But it's also something of like when a videographer is like following you around, you have to have good communication skills or things can get really bad really fast. And especially with two people that are in a relationship as well of we need to make sure we're communicating in the right way that's respectful to our relationship and also respectful to having someone else in our space. And so it is something where while it, I, I wish I would have been more consistent starting off, like I really do wish I w was consistent in the long run. I am glad that it happened the way that it did because I feel so much more aligned with myself. And I also feel when it comes to my knowledge, I feel more confident. Now, not that you should wait until you know everything to post things. Definitely not what I'm saying. But I feel more confident within who I am and how I speak instead of it being something of me posting something and then getting really negative feedback and me not being able to take that feedback or take that something did bad or whatever it may be. Right. And I think the the other thing for me is that I am very focused on quality. That is every aspect of my life. I want things to be 
uh, very high quality. Like I'm not, I am not your source for finding budget things. <laughs> I, I would, can confirm <laughs> this. I would be, I prefer to not have the thing if I can't have the best thing that goes for our gym equipment that goes for uh, things within, in, in here, Miguel specifically, like there's a, a lot of things that in which I am very focused on quality. And so that is another thing within the content in and of itself that I had to know and be self-aware enough of like, we have to bring this and really invest into the content for me to be present in this. And that's what we've done this year and has been so uh, beneficial for us. Yeah. I think it's been so huge and it is something where we do appreciate quality. So I am glad that we do have this accountability to be able to bring this quality because I know it's what we both wanted all along. Right. And that also held us back of, oh, well, we don't have the best of the best or we don't know how to do something. And so we did wait. because yeah. And you can make as many excuses as yeah, you want. You like can. you can, you we, can run the excuse <laughs> list up, you know, quite a bit. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I will talk about some different things that since we have started posting of how that has changed my mentality or what I've learned. And one thing I already mentioned was just kind of my voice and being able to know how I want to show up on social media. Truthfully, looking back at content that I've created in the past, not that any of it is per se bad or that I'm like upset that I created it, but I can just tell that I didn't feel like a sense of self. And that's something that I really feel confident within now of the person that I am, as well as what I feel comfortable posting. I don't have to post the exact same stuff that Alex posts to be taken seriously. And I can have this other side to me that really likes showing things like makeup and skin and clothing and all these different aspects of me. And I can be goofy and I can be funny and I can be sweet and I can be serious. I can be all these different different versions and feel very comfortable and confident within that instead of feeling so lost of trying to regurgitate what someone else is saying or trying to mirror what someone else is doing. I get to do me, which is a really cool thing to come to mm -hmm. as we've gone through all of this. And a, a large part of that, I will also say, is that we do have such a great creative team within yes. Miguel, Daniel, and David. Of They all very much so align with the vision that I have and the vision that Alex has. And so the content being edited and filmed is so in line with me as well. And that makes it even more special. Yeah. And I think to, to that point, it has been something where specifically with Daniel and Miguel, those are two individuals outside of Sue that I speak to every single day from like a, a work perspective and those different factors. And so that has been great from a communication standpoint and has made me realize that any of the... Um, poor connection that I have with any of our other employees or those different things, oftentimes it's just rooted in the simple fact of I don't speak to them enough type mm -hmm. scenario. And so that was one of the biggest benefits that I've experienced from that side of things. Um, the, what was the, there was something I was going to speak to within what I learned and I got caught up in your point. <laughs> um, one thing that I have learned is the actual utilization of the platform, because I think that many individuals fall into just the consumption of the platform, not engaging and not creating conversation and those different things. And that is a very draining process. You're just simply scrolling and it's very mindless. And I think there's a time and a place if you're just trying to like, I don't know. I don't actually, I don't. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, but within that, I think that what's been the biggest like transformation for me is that if I'm on stories, I'm trying to engage with the people that I'm watching. I'm not just simply scrolling through stories. Like I'm wanting to be able to like say that I like the picture or, or rooting for them or th those different factors of just spreading a good message and, and sharing also the component within my content and engaging with individuals who are willing to engage with me. Like it has been a much more fulfilling process rather than a draining process um, in this time frame. Yeah, and I think that it's allowed me to audit kind of who I'm following or who I'm interacting with because now I feel so much better on the platform. I'm not sitting there like, oh, what am I going to post on Instagram today? I guess I have to post or I have to engage. And then I just end up scrolling and spending all this time. I don't believe I've scrolled on Instagram, like truly just like unpurposefully scrolling 
for months because I had decided, first, this is not helping my mental health at all. I don't feel good when I'm done scrolling. And it's not necessarily because I was following a ton of bad people. I just, it felt pointless to me of just scrolling to scroll. So I feel better when I'm on the app. I feel like I'm having fun with what I'm posted. I'm excited. Like I have so many things I'm excited to post instead of just like, I guess I'll post this today because this is what I, I just need to post. I need to show up on social. And I feel like the people following me and following this podcast, following our YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram, whatever it may be, they're seeing more of me and they see me more confident, me more aligned with myself. So then the people interacting with me are more aligned with me. And I feel so much more positive within my interactions on social media because of that. It's this funny concept of no one was interacting with me in the way that I felt was aligning with me because people weren't seeing me. And so that's something of just, I get to now get on and find new creators and be inspired instead of like, I was just following so many fitness people, not that that's bad, but I was following so many other coaches that were posting about similar topics as me. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to consuming is I would have an idea for a post and I'd be like, I'm going to make a post on this. And I would open Instagram and scroll and see a post on it. And I'll be like, well, I don't need to post like that person already got it covered. But, and this was something that someone on staff brought up when we've really pushed them to post more of, well, like, why wouldn't I just share a post that already covers this? That's a great, great point. And I share a lot of posts on my story, but you have to think of at the end of the day, does every single person see your story? If they see your story, are they going to go to that person's page and actually read that post and be interested to enough to go to that person's page? Even if you say you should read this, you're also looking at, did anyone see their post and being able to be pulled at like all these different metrics where at the end of the day, this is a constant machine that's going and and you just need to get in front of people's faces. There's tons of things that I've either repurposed content I've already post, posted the same like concept or like the same infographic and refreshed it or you utilize things and people see it and they're like, this is so great. And I'm like, well, I posted that a year ago, but none of you saw it. So it's great that I'm posting it now. And not every piece of information has to be brand new information. It has to be presented in a way that's going to be helpful for someone. And if you keep that at the core of it, then you'll also have a lot more fulfillment than it being something that you're just kind of throwing out there. And if someone didn't see it that way, Way because no one even knows how the algorithm works at the end of the day, then you're in this place of just feeling so down when it wasn't that nobody liked your post, no one saw your post. Right. And I think that one thing that we express to each other as well as express to our coaches is that people need to be reminded more often than not rather than shown something brand new. Like it is going to be very beneficial to be reminded of things that they're already been told. And and oftentimes that's what we need to hear. And so that's been a big uh, shift for us because I think that prior to all this, we were in a position of like, this has to be groundbreaking information for it to be posted. Like it has to be brand new, no one has to see it, has seen it before, that kind of thing. And it's like, you're going to have a post like that once every three months, maybe, yeah. like at most. And that would be pretty consistent of like an earth shattering thing. And of that, um, like losing that thought process and understanding that people truly just need to be reminded more often, opened up the horizon of just being able to convey a message and share. And oftentimes it's just saying something a particular way that clicks for someone. Yeah. They could, they could hear it 10 times. And on that 10th time, it's just perfectly worded for their mind. And it just, everything clicks. Yeah. And when was the last time that you heard something for the first time and then it was immediately cataloged into your brain to never forget it? Probably not. Yeah. That's not how a lot of people's brains work. It's definitely not how mine works. I need to reread and study things for it to actually hit and be exactly. in my head. And so if you are saying like, oh, people have probably heard this before. Again, maybe they just need to hear it in a different way. Maybe they need to hear it one more time. And maybe they need to hear it from you at a different point in their life. There's been books that I've read where when I read it, I was like, oh, not applicable next. And then I read it a few years 
years later and I'm like, oh, this is the best book ever. And it's just because the timing of how it happened, not that the information wasn't helpful. I just wasn't ready for it at that point or it wasn't as applicable at that point. Yeah. And I think our exercise execution videos are a great representation of this where a lot of the exercises that we are teaching are exercises that you guys have seen hundreds of times, but it could be just a way that either myself, Sue, or Austin are breaking it down for you. We say one thing differently that is like, oh, that is what's been going wrong with my my squat form or my deadlift or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I found my voice, obviously, is what I've been talking about. But I also felt like I feel like I've been finding more of my audience and those people that were like relate to me. And I've also been able to I feel like our team has gotten closer through this yeah. because like Alex said, when it comes to communicating with people, you're going to have a better relationship with people you communicate with more, just point blank. Yes, of course, we can all have that friend where you don't talk to them for months and then you pick up and everything's good. But that's only probably one, maybe two people in your life. And those are probably like, again, very close friends that you grew up with, not talking about people that are possibly on your staff or you're trying to make a connection with. That's not going to be the case. And so being able to see their personalities and see them show up on social allows me to learn more about each of them that I want it. Again, you want to never assume something. I don't know what people do in their day-to-day -day life unless you tell me what you do in your day-to-day -day life. And so if you're not showing up, how am I supposed to know? It's become normal to you, but it's not normal to someone else. And so being able to see our coaches and our staff's personality come up, to see them educating on things and they post things and I'll be like, oh, that was a great post or I didn't think of it that way. Learning from our staff, from the way they phrase something that I might not already understand, but they phrase it in a way where, again, I get a little nugget from it and it's really special. And I get to see their confidence go up, them be more aligned with what they want to post and what like client that they want. Um, and it's also allowed me to realize communication is so helpful and I do need to have more touch points with people throughout the week. And so that's been a big reason is why we've changed the structure of how things are going within PD because because that has been a wake up call for us of, oh, no, we need to communicate way more and touch base way more and see these people way more. Yeah. And I think from a, a social media perspective, the biggest thing that I have learned or, or another thing that I've learned is uh, this has turned into something that I was having so much anxiety around to now being in a position where I'm having so much fun. And I think that I have found pieces within social media and I have found a um, time that I can spend on social media for it to be conducive for me and not go past that threshold to become something that is draining for me or what have you. And so I think that that's something else that people uh, need to find for for themselves as a whole. And so what I utilize, and, and I don't believe Sue does this, but this is just something that I do for myself is that I have the, the screen, t screen time, uh, what's that called? The time limit. The time limit thing, aspect blah, blah. for them. And so within that, I have a specific time allotment that allows for me to be on there and enough to be able to engage with uh, like DMs, which has been super fun. That was something that gave me a lot of anxiety previously of just like uh, like repost and and DMs being sent. It just gave me a lot of anxiety for whatever reason. And that has been really nice to actually utilize that component of the platform and engage with everyone, as well as it gives me enough time to do that and post my stuff, engage with people. And it really just, it's enough time to engage. It's mm -hmm. if I was to, if I use it willy nilly and scroll, well, I get frustrated with myself because it's like, man, I missed out on getting to talk to everybody today type scenario. And so that's been one big change for, for me that has been uber duper helpful and keeping myself disciplined. I give myself kind of a pat on the back when that screen time thing comes up and it blocks me out, like staying off of it. And when I don't click, like remind me in a minute, remind me in 15 minutes, <laughs> just turn it off for the day. <laughs> and when I don't click those buttons, I'm thrilled with myself. And yeah. so it's like a massive pat on the back, massive discipline jump for me and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And another thing that we both learned is what do you know, when you apply effort and you show up consistently, <laughs> crazy. your business can improve. So yeah. we have seen great, great, great improvement. The ROI is very high. And that's something where we are both so afraid to try. And now that we've tried, we're like, why don't we do that sooner? Yeah. 
So it, it's been cute. Like that's probably the biggest thing is like, it's worth it to try and spend the right. time on it. Yeah, and I think that there was a lot of people prior to us doing this that were like, I, I love physique development. I have no idea who these people are. Mm -hmm. Like they give such great information and um, like we see all the quality results that they have. They post side by sides, all these things, but I don't know them. And this has given people an opportunity who were on the fence or have been following for a long time. Like I can't express how many of the individuals of the uh, inquiring clients that I've gotten on calls with over the past 10 weeks or so that have all been like, I've followed you guys for three years and I like just getting to see you guys over these past couple of weeks has pushed me over the edge to finally inquire. Like I've opened up the inquiry form tens of times, mm -hmm. tens of like not a hundred probably, but <laughs> tens of times. And in that they finally took the plunge solely just for us showing up more. And that was, I mean, a lot of people have been in that same boat. So that's been a really cool experience to understand that and just the ROI and like the self-fulfillment as well. Yeah. Like I I find a lot of um, enjoyment in documentation. Like I, I wish that I had a film of my entire life. Like I, I love that aspect and having this in place and we have basically every day filmed <laughs> for the last 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and so that is a really cool component for me to to have that uh, moving forward and all like it's just been such a fulfilling thing. And also to be doing it with individuals who I dearly, dearly enjoy to be around um, has been so cool. Yeah. And that's what I was going to bring it back around of you saying that you had so much anxiety towards creating content. And I did as well. Obviously, that's why we didn't create it. And now like both of us are having so much fun. Like I look forward to the days that we get to record the podcast. I actually wish like we could record twice a week because yeah. I love recording this podcast so much. And I've loved doing the the day in the life that we did that's on YouTube. And if you haven't seen it, we'll link it in the show notes and there's going to be another one coming out with Alex. So we'll link that in the show notes too. But I did that one and I'm like, when's the next one? Like, let's yeah. do it again. Or oh, I want to get more footage of this and I want to do this. Or like now when I am scrolling on Instagram, it's of the purpose of creativity, not of this draining thing that you're talking or the draining aspect that you're talking about. I'm looking and I might see a trend or see a way someone did something. And I'm like, I really love how they did that. How can I make it my own? And it's this fun challenge to be working on. And it's so crazy because it went from this being this dreaded thing that I like never wanted to spend time on or I felt was just so time consuming. And then it turns into this thing where I wish I had more time to do it. Like I wish I could just spend a whole month not doing anything else, but like creating stuff yeah. like this. Like that would be so much fun to me. Yeah. And it just took me pushing and trying. And when we started, like if you look at the first reels that like we created with like Daniel and Miguel to now, like they've only just gotten better and better and better. And like, it's just so cool to see that over the time and to see us come into ourselves within that. Yeah. I think it's, it would be funny to see how many cuts or like how many clips we did at the <laughs> beginning for those of like how many times it took us to just articulate for a 30 second to a minute video yeah. of like how many times it really did take and almost like scripting it out of like, okay, this is exactly what I'm going to say to whereas now we have a, we have a topic idea and we just run with it mm -hmm. and we'll record it. And then like this most recent time for the reels, uh, it was myself, Daniel and Sue sitting in there. And so I'd run it and then we'd be like, what do we think? And we would make small adjustments, run it again, and it would take us two or three cuts and we'd be done. Mm -hmm. And then we'd move on to the next one. And so I can promise you at the beginning, it was not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be like 30 minutes for like one <laughs> reel. We'd be sitting in here. Yeah. And I, th I really think I spent like an hour and a half on... Uh, like recording and I got maybe two reels out of it and I was so frustrated by the end of it. I was recording against this back wall in here yeah. and I was so frustrated because I couldn't get my words together. I couldn't get into the flow. So it takes practice. Yeah, like that's the thing of us saying, oh, we've been consistent for two months. It's also been six to eight years for both of us leading up to this of being able to post stuff. Maybe it wasn't as consistently, but posting stuff and being on social for that time 
time and now it getting to the point where we've built up. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I just need to be consistent for two months and I'll be able to see all of these things that Alex and Sue are seeing. Probably not. And we've even had to have that conversation with people on the staff of, I've been posting like two or three times a week for a few weeks now. Like, why, why shouldn't things be picking up? But it does take time to like get that pickup to come. It's not just, it's the same with uh, if you're trying to see a change within your physique, you can't just be like, oh, I was good for a few weeks. Why isn't my body exactly the way I want it now? Yeah. And it has to be good. Like yeah. you, you you're not like you can be as consistent as you want to be, but if you're just putting out shit content, it's still going to do horrible. Yeah. And so that was the other thing of what I've really taken from this is that progression is, is what we all strive for within all aspects of our life. And so when, once I saw that, oh my, okay, I, I like this, but I can do better than this. And then it was like, okay, that was good, but I can still do better. And so that's where I found so much enjoyment of all of this is that it just can can continue to get better and better and we can articulate ourselves better. We can convey different messages in, in different ways and in better ways. Um, and that has been the thing that I've fallen in love with the most, just as I would be within my, uh, within my training, within my work. Like the progression is the fun part. The process is the fun part. And so once you find that and you understand those components, then things really start to come together for you. Yeah. And I, um, I'm currently reading the Tim Grover Relentless book. Such a good book. Um, I, I thought I'd read it, but I guess I hadn't. I guess I'd seen so many excerpts from it. But um, I actually had a quote, and it's like saved on the bottom of my computer so I can see it throughout the day. And I hadn't read the book, and then I just read across that quote in the book. But it's crave the end result so intensely that the work becomes irrelevant. And that's a big thing of it. And Tim Grover also talks a ton about like you have to love the journey. It's not just about making money or it's not just about like doing this. It's about being better than you were before. And that's something we've talked about a lot. And I personally really expressed of like, we get the opportunity to get better. And that's really exciting. You get to wake up each day and decide I can be a little bit better today. And that's really cool to get to this point of wanting to progress and wanting to just get a little bit better and to speak a little bit clearer and to use less likes, ums, pauses, all of these different things. And just even having this conversation right now, when was the last time we could ever be this comfortable being filmed and yeah. having a conversation? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like yeah. it, it's taken a lot of practice. Yeah, it's taken a lot of reps and it's taken a lot of time, but we've been very excited about getting better. The first podcast that we did, we didn't say, well, this is how it's going to be. Like, this is as good as it gets. Like, we've progressed throughout that. And it's the same with content. It's the same within training. It's the same within our physique goals. It's the same within our work. And it's the same within our business. Is Our business from a few years ago to now is completely different because we've always tried to continue putting effort forward and continue taking that next step forward. So it's been something also that I feel like I've had so much more creativity because I've allowed this side of me to come out more and Instead of just being buried in work all the time, where listen, we're still buried in a lot still of work. In work. <laughs> I am not going to deny that. I know I've talked about it a lot, but instead of just doing like check ins all day, every day, I feel so much more creative having these interactions with everyone on our creative team, being able to talk to Alex and plan different things for content and be so excited about them. Like that's been huge. Another thing that I've learned is like I have a lot more creativity than I was giving myself credit for because I wasn't giving myself space to be creative. So that's another thing within posting content is like you have to also give yourself space to be creative. We didn't come up with all of these ideas immediately on the spot and we're able to just do them. It, again, like Alex said, it took practice to get there. It took reps to get there, but it was worth doing and it was exciting to do. Yeah. I, I mean, there's been, there have been filming sessions where I have just sat in front of the camera and I'm like, I don't have a thing to say. But I have put in my calendar that I'm going to be sitting here for an hour, so I better find something. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit there for about 15 minutes and stare at that camera. And Daniel can attest to this, that I have video of me just blank staring at that thing. And then all of a sudden, something comes to me and I start talking. And then I start to get a little bit of momentum. And then I'll, I'll just randomly, off the top of my head, film five reels. Mm -hmm. And it, they're all very good. It was just that I had to sit there, put myself in the scenario and force myself of like, no, you're going to sit down and you're going to get this done right now. And so that was a, a big piece. And the other thing with us um, 
<laughs> filming and feeling more comfortable, I will say that the the change in chairs here mm-hmm. between our old chairs, if you guys have watched any of the old podcasts, <laughs> relative to these chairs, much more comfortable. I'm probably much more comfortable <laughs> speaking because of these chairs. <laughs> Really didn't like those old chairs. I will they were say stiff, bro. <laughs> that I didn't mind them too much, but they did like squeak a lot when you so move. So loud. And so it always sounded like you were farting when you moved. <laughs> so I always like when I moved, I had to like really pick myself yeah. up and like uncross my legs so carefully. <laughs> so it wasn't like this huge like farting noise while we're on the podcast. <laughs> if you go back to some of the original, like very first podcast, you'll see my head like jerk over because she'll be sitting up and it sounds like she farted. And I'm like, dang, like that was crazy. And she's like, it's not me. <laughs> it's the chair. <laughs> it's the chair. Uh, but another thing as far as like what I've gathered um, from posting is just the interaction that I've gotten from people has been so positive. Every time I post something, someone either says like this content is great. The quality of this is great. You guys are pumping out so many great things. And again, it's coming back to that point of trying and seeing that return on it is such a rewarding feeling. But then again, it's been so fun to do it that I don't need that outside validation to continue doing it. So it's a cool juxtaposition of like, I craved that outside, like people telling me it was good stuff for so long. But now that I'm enjoying it so much, I don't care like if people yeah, say that it's good, cake. I'm just like, oh, I loved how this turned out and I had a lot of fun doing it. But then, like you said, it's icing on the cake when people respond back to it. But it's been so cool to see other people's response and to see other coaches in the space, honestly. And I'm not going to make a flat out statement that we pioneered this, but before I was seeing that people were doing reels, they were really only using trending sounds and just kind of putting like words on the screen. That was just what people were doing. And you and I were some of the first that I personally saw that were just making our own sounds and just talking on the reels. And that has been really cool like over the past few months of seeing other fitness professionals get out of just the trending sounds and not to say that they're bad, but just getting out of that and showing them speaking and showing up more which has been so cool because at the core of this, what I care about, of course, I care about furthering our business and growing our business and all these other things. But at the core of it, if we're getting more people to post more meaningful information about health and fitness and getting that into the world, frick yeah. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, is there anything else that you've uh, learned over Um, being consistent or what are your roadblocks that you faced along the way? You roadblocks wise, I feel like I touched on the the main components and and a lot of it. I, I guess one more that I can share is that uh, it kind of goes in line with like the goofy aspect of feeling as though that I was just a hub for information and people weren't necessarily interested in me. They were interested in just the information that I share. I still am battling through that one. I, it's going back and forth from time to time. Um, but that's the the one thing that I feel like this is helping me get over that people are engaging with me as an individual, not just the, the coach Alex and the educator Alex, like they're engaging with Alex. Mm-hmm. And so that has been a big help for me. Yeah. So if we didn't have a whole creative team, because that's not in everyone's budget mm-hmm. and it definitely wasn't in our budget until we got to this point. I will say though, from a budget perspective, we had to make it Yes. Part of the budget. It wasn't like, okay, now we have this, like we have sufficient funds, what have you. We had to force the envelope of like, this is our priority and we made it work because we could have continued on and been like, ah, it's not in the budget yet. Like you Mm -hmm. can make the excuse of not in the budget for a long time. It's like, you can just continue to say and prioritize other things above it. Like we put it at the top of our priority list from January 1st and made it something that we were going to have for the rest of time. Yeah. And we are both people that like, (laughs) there's lots of studies that show, uh, there was a study done on smoking cigarettes and it was, they had two different groups of at the end, they either won money or money was taken out of their bank account if they didn't stop smoking. And within this study, they, found that people, if it wasn't their money already, they didn't stop smoking because they were like, oh, it wasn't my money to begin with. But when money was coming out of their account, they were like, oh shit, I better start stop smoking. It's the same within paying for coaching of you being in the spot of like, it doesn't mean anything to you until you have to put something of your own forward. And it's the same thing for this of we're like, man, if we're putting our money into this, we better show up because yeah. I can't just waste 
this money. And so knowing what that motivator is, it's money for a lot of people, what that is for you so that you do just show up like no matter what. I mean, I've, I've expressed that I've had a lot of hard days on this prep. I know that Alex in 2022 has had a lot of hard days just with the workload that we've been under. We could have still made excuses with Miguel being here of like, there's too much going on. We can't film. And there has been a few days where that's been the case. But more often than not, like 98% of the time, we are like, we're showing up even if it's not a great day because we said we are going to do this and we're not going to break this promise. Exactly. So yeah, I would say that that's the the biggest hurdles that I've overcome. I think that, um, and it's just opened up something that I've always enjoyed that I'm just like finally being honest with myself that I've enjoyed. Um, I, I love making content. It is something that I find such enjoyment in, in general. And, uh, the, the goofy aspect, being able to create something that like engages with people that has, people resonating in different ways or they connect in different ways. That is so cool to me. And being able to, to create that is a really fun experience for me and something that I've always enjoyed, but have been like, I'm too cool to like put this effort in, you know? And so that's, that's that's been awesome. It's so funny because we both felt that way and then didn't vocalize that exact wording to each other. And I was like, I've felt that I'm like, I want to act too cool to not put the effort forth and vice versa. But um, let's go ahead and say if if you didn't have a creative team and you were just doing it yourself, what are some different things that you would push forward or we've talked to the coaches about doing to really just still show up and to be on social media? Yeah. And I'll speak from a coaching perspective, uh, just because obviously that's the realm in which I am in. And so what I would say is just constantly taking questions that your clients bring to you um, and turning that into content. That is the easiest by a long shot. That's exactly how we started Yeah, is that I was just taking the questions that I would have in the check-ins and then making content around those questions. And it's the easiest way to get the kind of the ball rolling. And then you can engage with your, your following and then they're able to really showcase what they want to see moving forward. Um, but I would, I, if, if I was in a situation, didn't have Miguel, didn't have Daniel, didn't have um, the, the whole squad as a whole, I think that we would, I would probably just set up my camera on the, f- <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'd probably set up my phone, front camera and talk. Yeah. And I would just clip those together. And as time went on, I probably would get nicer things to make it easier and better quality. But I probably would literally just start with the front facing camera and crank out topics yeah. and give people information and go from there, share my my training as a whole. People love to see other people doing hard stuff and in the trenches. People want to see you doing the thing and they engage and that's how they're going to resonate with you in general. So just showcase, like if you're a young coach, Coach or you're someone who is getting into prep or whatever that thing is, show the journey and people are going to really enjoy that. No matter if it's the best quality in the world or the not the best quality, they're going to resonate with you as the individual more so than the, the content itself. So that's where I would start. Yeah. And if you scroll back on my like Reels tab, then you will see like when Reels first came out, that's what I did is it was just front facing camera and me talking. And I was talking really fast to try and fit it in a 60 second thing. Yeah. Uh, she's not a fast talker. No. <laughs> Naturally. So (laughs) forcing it is a challenge. (laughs) And so that's like what I did to start off. And that's what our coaches are doing starting off is, hey, just get down and talk about the things that you know people have questions to. And even if it feels so simple or someone's already done it, big whoop. Anytime someone creates a clothing brand, you don't hear people being like, well, someone's already created a clothing brand. No diff. Like there's a million clothing brands. It shouldn't stop you from going and doing it because you have a unique voice. You have something different to share. And there's always going to be a demographic or niche for you specifically that needs you to show up within that. And so dropping the facade of I'm too cool for that or I don't want to be embarrassed or I don't want to try, whatever it may be, and just recognizing like, hey, if this is something you care about, do it instead of just saying you're going to do it for years on end because you will be a lot happier um, instead of that that mindset where I've had that a lot in my life of, well, if I don't try, I can't fail. But if you don't try, you also don't see any forward movement within your life. Yeah. And I think that like with, with training content, there's always going to be somebody who's stronger than you. There's always going to be someone who is potentially doing the movement better than you, has better filming quality. Like just get the content out there. And as you get more reps, you're going to do better. Yeah. 
I mean, again, 2020 videos compared to now, both done by Miguel, quality has improved yeah. and they've uh, gone from there. It didn't mean that we shouldn't have posted those ones from 2020. We needed to We're post redo those. a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miguel's least favorite one is going up here soon. And we'll take yeah. down the other one. <laughs> yeah, we're replacing some of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have the best, but we we're just right. did it because we knew we needed to and to show up in that way. Yep. So it's Super been a fun journey. Us. Yeah. And uh, couldn't do it without the team that oh we have gosh, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. At this Definitely point, could not do it without the three of them. That is yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one other thing I'll say within finding content, I believe it was actually Austin who had said this to me and it like clicked. Of if you have to repeat yourself more than twice, make a resource for it. And so that's something I've always gone by. So if you're ever like, how do how do they come up with so many ideas? It's literally if I've had to repeat myself twice, I write it down and I make a resource for it. Whether that resource is a reel or a post on Instagram or a YouTube video or a PDF, whatever it may be, it's still a resource that I don't have to re-repeat myself because I really dislike repeating myself and it's not Same. efficient. Yeah. <laughs> Any other parting points you have? I don't thought? think so. This was really fun to record because I, I feel like I got more, like I learned more about you in the process too. Yeah. Like some of the stuff we've talked about, but some of the stuff I hadn't heard you say yet, or maybe I've heard and I was not fully paying attention or, oh, you know, crazy so how that works. on social media and in real it's life. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, humans uh, are funny. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's nice to be reminded of some of those things potentially. Yeah. And I am just so glad that you are sharing your goofy side. I did tell Alex I was. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I was feeling a little selfish the other day because like no one really was seeing his goofy side except me. So it felt like really special. <laughs> <laughs> and then more people are seeing his goofy side and they're like, oh my gosh, we love it. I'm like, yeah, that's like my Alex, okay? <laughs> like, stop. He's mine. Oh. Uh, so it's so silly. That's but ridiculous. I was like, I should vocalize this to you. I've been feeling a little selfish. I that couldn't believe it. Other people are seeing the side of you that I've loved so dearly. And it makes me truthfully so happy because it is something that like people haven't understood what an amazing human being that you are and how funny and like how much you make me laugh like you will have me just howling laughing and it's funny because once he sees me start going he just pushes it yeah. more and he starts getting more ridiculous like if I were to say anything he's the most ridiculous person I've ever met and he'll just get more and more ridiculous because he knows it makes me so tickled and it's just the best and yeah. so other people seeing that uh, while I still will be a little bit selfish um, it makes me so happy because he's just more aligned with him and he gets to be who he is because for a while he didn't want to show any goofy. And if you scroll back on his Instagram or you go back in time on YouTube, yeah, go back on YouTube you like seven years ago, truly goofy he is ridiculous. And it takes people off guard when they finally see it of him. Cause they're like, what? I, I don't have a beard. This. So enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like the, the version that I fell in love with. So it's really special for like other people to fall in love with that. Um, but no, he's still mine. Okay. <laughs> he's mine. Um, but it's been so fun to see you just show showcase yourself and you feel more alive because of it, because you get to be you. Well, thank you. You're yes, welcome. it's been fun. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. <laughs> see you guys. It was great. <laughs>